So you're probably here to see the rare lobster. We'll get right into it. We won't waste your time. Look at it. Pretty cool. It's growing a new claw. It's blue. This is the first time we've caught one this color. If you're new, lobsters actually come in quite a few different colors. We get them in yellow, red, orange, blue, white, and a combination of all those colors. Sometimes they'll be split 50-50 down their back. Sometimes they'll be spotted, calico. This one's pretty unique. I've never really seen one like this. Usually if these are females, we'll actually notch them and let them go. That way we can protect them and keep them in the ocean. Let other fishermen see them, let them breed and reproduce, and maybe keep the interesting colors in the ocean. But since it's a male, there's nothing we can really do to protect it. So we're gonna bring it in and put it in the tank at the co-op in Winter Harbor. If you guys are in town, you can come check it out. If you're new, we're lobster fishermen here in Maine. We got 400 traps we haul each day. We take you through them, we video share what we catch with you guys, anything interesting, some behind the scenes of the industry. We've got a beautiful morning here today. We're going to go through our 400 traps, see if we get anything else cool. What a day! Look at that! Beautiful sunrise. We got a little bit of southwest wind, but not bad. There any chance. Hey, bud. Yes, sir. <laughs> got a nice rye mouth eel. We've been catching quite a few of these the past few days. We hadn't caught any all year long, but they just showed up. Big spines in their tail, you gotta watch out for them. It's like the dogfish, they'll try to stab you. So we try to keep these as interesting as we can for you guys and cut out most of the boring stuff, but. At the same time, we also want to show you more of what it's actually like to be a fisherman. The short form content kind of gives you a false sense of what it's like to be a fisherman, kind of only shares the highlights. So with these, I kind of want to show what it's actually like and show how much of a grind it can be. So right here, we're catching a lot of Jonah crabs, not a lot of lobsters. Uh, so we're just going to haul these five up at our normal pace, just like we would the other 79. We'll just go through the motions. that steam coming out that's pretty standard every buoy Keith takes a hit off of his bait so, so he takes 80 hits at least a day so, well, it's usually two hits two hits per buoy so it's actually 160 hits and he, blow, and he blows them all in my face when he blows it out it's good I got asthma too so it works out great When he's not blowing vape in my face, Cody's blowing cigarette smoke in my face. All this fresh oxygen out here, who'd want to breathe that? I noticed when I were vaping, he was used his inhaler, so I wanted to make sure he was on top of it. He hits her a lot more now. So it looks like there's a few lobsters in there, but pretty much all junk. Shorts, V-notches, daggers, and Jonah crabs. A couple keepers in there, maybe one or two.
that 80 more times today. Hopefully catch more lobsters than crabs. Maybe catch some cool stuff. We'll share it with you as we get it. This is the enemy of 2023. We can't get away from it. A lot of people ask why we don't sell them. We do have a market for them. We can. We do have a license and a market for them, but the market is not great. By the time we pay for trucking to get them to where we're going, and by the time we deal with handling them on the boat, bringing them in, it's not really worth the work that goes into bringing them in. We're gonna take all the footage today and we're just gonna do a, a Keith vaping compilation. <laughs> they say they're bad for you, but there ain't no way they're bad for you because he'd, he'd be dead by now. He complains about his gloves blowing out. He can't figure out why his gloves keep blowing out. He takes it on and off 80 times a day, so... How can you expect the glove to hold up to that? Give me a nice helmet to hold two beers. <laughs> what drills those holes? Do you remember? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember either. Cohog shell. We get lots of cohog shells. Dead ones. If you look closely, you can actually see there's a hole drilled in it. I can't remember what does it, but there's a creature down there that will actually drill a hole in the cohog shell, kill it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> little baby halibut too. <laughs> anyway, we got a little halibut. We'll let him go. We don't see them very often at all. But like I was saying, the cohog shell, something drills a hole in the cohog shell. It's a little creature. I'll have to look it up. Or I'll put it over text over the screen here. But they eat the cohog from the outside of the shell in, and then the shell dies. Yeah, it's little. It's a little creature. Can't remember what it is. 60 traps into the day. You guys can sit back, get comfy, take a nap, do whatever you want to do. We'll wake you up when we catch something cool. We got a nice oversized. Not real big, but six pounder or so. He's oversized. They're protected. We can't keep them once they get over five inches. Oh, I gotta give him a snack. Keith was actually online searching the internet last night and texted me, taught me something. Keith, do you wanna come tell him? In case it's wrong. That way, it's, yeah, if it's wrong, if this is wrong and inaccurate, it's all Keith's fault, but he says. No, this is 100% true. These little hairs on their walking legs, that's how they taste. They don't taste with their mouth or nothing. They taste with these, so they touch everything, they know what kind of food it is, what it tastes like. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Their walking legs actually, too, have little pinchers on them. You can see them squeezing. So they have little mini claws on every one, and they can actually squeeze pretty hard with every one of these walking legs. Can you imagine trying to drive one of these things? <laughs> you take a human, we got what, a few fingers we gotta run? These guys got like, what, one joint, two, three, four in each claw that they're running. They can move each eye independently. They can move their antennas. They can do all kinds of crazy things. They can move their antennas around independently. They got these little feelers, little hands in here that they use to eat with. They move every leg, every joint. These things. I don't think Keith could drive one. I could probably drive one, but Keith would probably be swimming to the surface or something. All right, I'm gonna give him a snack. There he goes. We're gonna see if this lobster can crush this piece of chalk. We got a nice female, she's full of eggs. She's got no notch yet. We're gonna give her a notch. If you're new, that just signifies she's a breeder. Let's future fishermen know she can't be kept if she's caught down the road when she doesn't have eggs. We got a piece of chalk here. Had a lot of suggestions in past videos on what we should see if they can crush. Chalk, I think, is a good demonstrator. Seems like anyway. I don't know. I tried to picture biting it with my teeth and it seems like it'd be hard to bite. It's also gonna be a little bit, it's probably gonna be kind of big for her to try, but let's see what she can do. Oh, like nothing. Piece of cake. She didn't even know it was in there. Keith, can you bite that? Yeah. <laughs> well here, let's see it. Can I? Yeah, you think you can bite it? I mean, yeah, 100% I can bite it. Is it 
Uh, it's just how you expect <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. You got a snack? No. I ain't biting that. All right. Sending her home with a snack. She's gonna go make some eggs. We got another one here that has no eggs. Has an old notch. This is one that somebody else marked in the past. Maybe it was even us. Who knows? She can't be kept. So now we're gonna head in. We gotta sell what we got. Put fuel on. Fuel up. Get our bait for the next day. We'll take you through the selling process and show you how we sell them, what the process on land looks like. So now we got to break them all down to 90 pounds of crate. It's always in his favor, never ours. But we get them around 90 pounds and then they go up back to their belt into a cooler. They go onto a refrigerated truck and off to the processor. So we're going to wrap this one up here. We're headed home. For now, these videos are primarily going to be lobster videos, but that's not the plan for the whole winter. We're going to work some other videos into it. We just happen to start these right in the middle of haul season. This is, tends to be our busier month, so most of these videos will be geared towards lobstering. But as fall slows and the winter approaches, we're going to start doing some ice fishing, flying, mixing some other stuff into it. But for now, these are primarily lobstering videos, and we'll catch you in the next one. We were going to catch you in the next one, but now we're broke down again. Boat. Specifically outboards. Outboards suck even worse than boats. We broke the shifter. Oh, nice. Can you pull it from the inside? You gotta find something to shift okay, to. Okay, is or something? We'll just leave her in gear from now on. We'll get the handy dandy screwdriver. This is the, the multi tool. It's also the door handle, if you didn't notice. That's how we open the door. We got a saying here chrome don't get you home. <laughs> the lobsters don't care how shiny and nice the boat is. But we might be pushing the limits of that saying a little bit with our door handle. Uh, we should strip her down for speed is all. <laughs> Only got one oil. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> Guess this one calls for a hammer. Luke McFadden hammer. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's still here. there. <laughs> we are. Oh, look at us go dude. now. Woo! Coming home. Yeah, we'll ne we won't need that. Oh, I'm leaving her in gear. Oh, <laughs> she's now a one way outboard. Yeah. Mark. The boat. The boat. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. There we go. We're ripping now. <laughs>